Hey everybody, I'm Mark Moorhead, Curator of Education here at the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting, the world's largest firefighting museum right here in Phoenix, Arizona, where if you can't come to see the museum, we bring the museum to you. And today what we're bringing to you is one of the real prides of our collection, a real American classic. This is a steam fire engine. Uh, this one was made by the American Fire Engine Company of Cincinnati, Ohio. It's their Metropolitan model. And this one was made for the city of Reno, Nevada. And it was made in 1904. Now the steamers came in quite a lot earlier than that. They came in in about 1850. And in big cities, they were what replaced the hand pumpers, the famous hand pumpers that went back even to the 1600s. That was what you would have seen all over the place. Uh, and they worked pretty well, the hand pumpers. The problem with them was, they needed a lot of manpower. You needed to have all these guys, big crews of guys, pumping away. And that gave rise to all sorts of problems. But the biggest problem was you couldn't have a professional fire company if it took 100 guys, say, or 50 guys or something like that to man one of those big hand pumpers. So the big cities, for various reasons, wanted to found a professional fire service. And they wanted to make it a government job so they could control it. And this was the invention that, for the most part, allowed them to do that. Uh, starting in about the 1850s, you started getting professional fire services in the big cities. This one was in Reno, Nevada, and it was this one was kind of late, like I said, 1904. And if it looks, you know, it's got this big, beautiful tank. The kids all say it looks like something from Willy Wonka's factory. If it looks a little like a locomotive engine, that's not by accident. It's an adaptation of locomotive crane technology. This tank, which you see here, was full of water. It's called the boiler. It wasn't to put on the fire. The water was to boil. Down here, you have a coal furnace. And that furnace, you would keep the coals banked in that coal furnace, in some cases, ideally, 24 hours a day. You'd hook them up by pipes on the back there. You'd hook them up to the furnace in the fire station. You could also hook it up to the water heater in the fire station and circulate that good hot water through there. But the idea was you kept the water in that tank simmering hot, almost boiling, ideally 24 hours a day. And then when the call comes in, in the really slick urban fire stations, they actually, it would pop open the stable doors when the, uh, in some of them, when the, when the call would come in and the horses were very well trained, they would take their place in front of the rig there and you would drop a harness down out of the uh, ceiling and you'd you know, ratchet them into their harness real quick. And if they really had their act together, a lot of times these firefighters, and of course the firefighters are doing their famous thing of stepping out of bed right into their boots, pulling the turn up pants on, sliding down the pole. And if they really had their act together, they could roll one of these out of a fire station about a minute and a half, maybe a little more. About the same amount of time that it takes to get a a uh, fire truck usually out of a modern fire station. Now it wasn't nearly as fast after that of course because you're rolling down these cobblestone streets but they would go pretty fast and while they're doing that the engineer and or the stoker are riding on the back there they're feeding that fire getting it really cranked up and the water starts to boil really boil in earnest and it's turning into steam and the steam is forced into steam pipes in the lower part of this smokestack here and the pressure from that steam is used to turn this steam engine. And we have it hooked up to an electrical motor so we can demonstrate it. You see there's the interlocking gears that, you know, pre-ball bearing technology. In the back is a flywheel that keeps the momentum going. And it turns these pistons up and down, these big old piston rods up and down in these pistons. That creates a vacuum and that vacuum is used to draw water through one of these big suction hoses from your hydrant or whatever your water source is. Then you hook up smaller hoses here or here, smaller gauge of hose, and that's what you point at the fire. That's your play hose. Now, there were advantages to this and there were disadvantages to this, but mostly advantages. Big advantage, it's very powerful. You know, probably the biggest hand pumper that we have here in the museum, that great big Jeffers from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. You can see a video about that as well. Uh, that would get you about 250 gallons of water a minute at its top performance, which is excellent. This could get you six, 700 gallons of water a minute, sometimes more. 
So you could really, you know, smack a fire in the nose with this thing. Big disadvantage, another big advantage of it, of course, one guy drives it, one or two guys, the engineer and or the stoker, ride on the back on the, on the scuttle and uh, tend the fire and tend the engine. So you don't need those big crews anymore. Now you'd have another few guys in the station that come in another wagon with, with hoses and ladders and axes and nozzles and all that good stuff. But basically you could now staff an urban fire station with eight, 10, 12 guys a shift so you didn't need those big crews anymore. So now it's economically possible for firefighting to be something that is a profession, an actual paid job. Uh, big disadvantage of this though, and I can tell you this firsthand, I've helped move it. It's really, really heavy. And so not a prayer of pulling this by hand, especially not with that diminished crew. You have to have horses, preferably three you know, big, strong, muscular draft horses like Clydesdales or Percherons, and they have to be fast too, of course. So that was a big expense. Now these were expensive, but you could buy one and they really built them to last. They might be 25, 30 years that you have this. But the horses, that's another story. 12, 13 years, it's time to put them out to pasture. Also, you have to train these horses in a very special way. A fire is not a comfortable environment for a horse. Horses like it a little more peaceful than that. So it's like a war horse. You have to train them to those conditions. And you usually needed three of them uh, to, to get you going. So you had to have these, these very expensive work horses to pull this thing. And you had to feed them, you had to train them, you had to maintain them. There were veterinary costs. As a result of that, of course, the uh, horses tended to be treated much better than the guys. As soon as you got to the fire, you would uncouple the horses, you'd lead them to safety. If it was cold, you'd put blankets over them. If it was hot, water, food, all that kind of stuff, because the horses were the really expensive and tough to replace part of this whole equation. And these didn't last as long in the fire stations as the hand pumpers. They came in by the middle of the 1800s, and by around the 1920s, that's the last you'd be likely to see one of these anywhere much. But uh, they were very, very influential because the, this was the reason that we were able to start a professional fire service, for the most part, in the United States. And they, but they were replaced long about, just a little over 100 years ago. They started getting replaced by, of course, the internal combustion engine because the first fire trucks you could get to a fire much faster, your response time plummeted, but also you could run the pump off of that, uh, off of that engine and it was much uh, more kind of efficient. You didn't need steam power, you didn't need horsepower, you didn't need whatever. So, Metropolitan Steamer from 1904, one of the true you know, flagship pieces of the Hall of Flame Museum, and uh, it was very fun to share it with you today. Check back in often. Mark Moorhead from the Hall of Flame Museum. Have a good one.